Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you are. Welcome back to our eyelet shawl knit along. Now we're ready to get started on the eyelet ridge section. We'll create this decorative stitching with yarn overs and I'll show you the Russian join. It's my favorite new way to join yarn. If you still need supplies, check out OneBigHappy.com. Let's get started. Okay, so we have cast on using the garter tab. I've showed you guys how to do the left lifted increase and the right lifted increase. And we've set up our stitch markers. We've worked this section right in here. There is our edge pieces. Here is our increases here. There are increases there. Now we are ready to start the eyelet ridge section. That's right through here. We are on row 11 on our pa pattern. So I have my marker here for row 11. My uh, stitch counter says row 10 because I like to click my stitch counter after I have finished a row. So when I look at it, I know that row 10 is completed and I'm getting ready to start row 11. That's just how my brain works. <laughs> so that's how I use it. Okay. We have our stitch markers in place. I'm using the Mindful Chakra stitch markers and they're absolutely adorable. And on row 11, we are going to, as always, knit the first three stitches. We will work our increase going back through the bump on the right. Then we knit across. This is where the stitch markers come in handy. There's several stitches now that we've built up between those two stitch markers. When we started, there was only one stitch between the two stitch markers. Now that we have gone a few rows, there's a lot more stitches in there. Now the great thing with this pattern, in the pattern, we have a, a little chart set up for you. And in that chart, it will show you at the end of every repeat, how many stitches are supposed to be between each stitch marker? And that'll help keep you on track a little bit as you go along. Okay, so this is the autopilot knitting I was talking about. Now I'm to the next stitch marker, so I know I need to do that increase. I'm on the right side of my work, so I know that this is a left-leaning increase going into the stitch on the right side. I'm going to make that increase, slide my marker. I always knit my center stitch, slide my marker, do my next increase through that loop right there. And there, are, like I said before, there's other methods to do these increases. This is just the one that I prefer to use. So that's the one that I put in the pattern. I am back to my autopilot knitting here. And I'm almost to, there we are. Okay, so I'm to that next um, stitch marker. So I know I need to do an increase. I'm gonna grab that pearl bump there, slide it onto my needle, and knit my last three stitches. Okay, now here is where you really start to see a difference in the pattern is on this next row. I'm turning my work over. I'm on the wrong side of the work. You gotta make sure to click my clicker, move my magnetic bar down. Now on this row, we are on row 12. We're gonna start to do something a little bit different than what we've been doing. We still go ahead and knit those first three stitches, but now the directions say, after we slide the marker, we knit to the next marker. So whereas before we were purling on the wrong side, now we're gonna go ahead and knit. And by doing this, we are creating the first ridge in our pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit till I get to the marker. Okay, and remember SM is slide marker. And now this is the center stitch. I want to go ahead and purl that center stitch because um, if you look at our finished shawl here, you'll see going down the center, all of these stitches are purled 
or I mean are knitted. They're all the same stitch going all the way down. I want to keep with that in my design and I am breaking up this ridged eyelet row by doing that but I think it gives a more crisp design. It's what I preferred so that's what we're going to be doing today. And I purl that stitch, I slide my marker over, then I go back to knitting and I'm going to knit until I get to the next stitch marker. Okay, now we're going to slip that stitch marker and again, before you slip it because you're, um, you don't want to get your yarn caught with that stitch marker, slip it and then slide your yarn back. Um, then we're going to knit these last three stitches and when I turn it over, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so by knitting on the wrong side, we now have purl bumps on the right side of the work. And I'll show you on the finish shawl where we'll see that at. We'll turn this like this. You can start to see how it's looking the same down here as there. This line right here is those purl bumps that we just made. That's breaking out from the stockinette stitch that you see here into this ridge right here. Now we're gonna go into row 13. Row 13 is exactly the same as row 11, um, except for we have more stitches now between the two stitch markers because we did an increase. So we just finished row 13 and we're moving on to row 14. This is the eyelet ridge section, which is a little bit of decorative stitching. It's kind of a lace stitch and I'm going to show you how to work that. This is where the yarn overs are. So we've got a purl two together and a yarn over right through here. Okay, to make the stitch on row 14, we just go ahead to keep with the edging. We're knitting the first three stitches sliding our stitch marker. Now because we have an uneven number of stitches between these two stitch markers, we are going to purl the first stitch and then yarn over. Now from here on out we're going to be purling two stitches together and to purl two stitches together I slide my needle through two stitches, wrap my yarn around and purl those two together just like that. Then I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to purl these two stitches together like that. And I continue doing this until I get to my next stitch marker. Now as you go along, if you come to your stitch marker and you have an extra stitch, we'll get there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to purl these two together, yarn over, okay, so now I am purling the last two right before my stitch marker. If I get to this point and for some reason my count is off, this is a place where you can kind of work in what you need to do. If you, uh, at this point, if you don't have two stitches left right before you get to the stitch marker, go back, count your stitches, see where you're at. If you have too many, this is a point where you could purl three together. If you don't, if you're short by one, then you just go ahead and purl one, do your yarn over and purl the next one. And that makes up that extra stitch. In theory, you won't have got, you, you will not have gotten off. Your stitches will work out perfectly. But we know all of us knitters out there, sometimes we lose track. This is a great place to just make that up as you go along. It, it won't change anything in the detail of the shawl when it's done. Okay, so I purled those two together slide my stitch marker 
purl that center stitch, slide my stitch marker. Now on this side, see on the last side, we purled one, then we yarned over um, on the uh, right side. Now we're at the center. I wanna go ahead and stick with the purl two together and then the yarn over because I don't want any extra um, spaces. Uh, I'll show you on here. I want this area right here to have some consistency, some structure. So this is where the purl two together, the knit one, the purl two together. Then I start with the um, yarn over over here. I just like the idea of giving that center area just a little bit more structure. Okay, so I slid my needle through the two stitches. I'm gonna purl two together. Then yarn over. Ah, purl these two together. I have a specific way that I like to hold my yarn. And I'll just show you guys right now. Each knitter, you need to find what works best for you for your tension. And for me, I like to wrap it around my ring finger and up and over my index finger. You'll see that I do move it around depending on what stitches I'm doing sometimes just to make sure that my tension is flowing. But that's the, the key to how you hold your yarn is you've got to be able to control your tension. Otherwise, your stitch gauge will get um, your stitches will become different sizes and that messes up your gauge. So the, the key is the consistency of how the yarn flows through your fingers. And um, I just get particular on how I wrap my yarn around. But like uh, other people I know, like my mom, she holds her yarn completely different. But as long as you get that tension, then you're okay there. Okay, knit these two together, do my yarn over. Knit these two together. Now, if I did my all my increases properly, I should just have one stitch this time, and I do. So I'm gonna knit that one together, then slide my stitch marker, and now I'm knitting these last three stitches right here. And then when I turn this over, you're gonna be able to see the beginnings of our lace work. And you'll see these are our yarn overs. These are forming the holes in the pattern, the eyelets. And then these are the purl two together. Those are the little posts between the eyelets. And let's go ahead and mark that 14 is done. Rows 15 and 16 are the same as we did on rows 11 and 12. So you can go ahead and finish those up and that will form, I'll show you here on the shawl, that'll form this section right down here and then we'll be ready to join in our next color using the Russian join. So I'm joining in a new color and I want the new color to start right here at the very end of this last stitch. In order to determine where to do the Russian join, I wanna mark this spot. And I am going to take out the last five stitches. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this spot right here and I'm gonna tink back, which means knit backwards. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So this is how much yarn it took to do the last five stitches. I want my new color to start right here. So I'm going to fold that in half, clip, Right here, it's a little scary, but I'm gonna clip that off. Okay, now I'm gonna take the new color and fold it over. And I'm going to thread my needle. Um, if you have, I'm using a bent tip needle. I've, I'm fairly comfortable with this needle. I use this needle a lot. Uh, some people find that a sharper, pointier needle is easier to do this with. Um, with this yarn, I had no problems using my bent tip needle. Okay, now what I wanna do is fold my yarn in half again. This is the point that we measured when we unstitched those five stitches that I need my new color to start. So what I'm gonna do is Stick my needle right in here. Now, I'm taking this needle and I'm wrapping it through the, th 
the spiral of the yarn and wrapping it back in on itself. Just right through those threads. And it's kind of just spiraling in on itself. The idea of this is I'm going to pull that tail right through the center of the working yarn. And it's gonna hide itself inside itself. And I wanna go a couple of inches in because I really want it to, to hide in there. And then, oh, that one didn't go through there. You got to make sure that your new color is through this loop. Okay, so we have the yarn that we need to make the next five stitches going this way. The other side is the tail. I have the tail through the needle and I have the needle through the working yarn. <laughs> I feel like I need diagrams here. Okay, pull that through until your tail comes out. So it's a little scrunched up right there. Now on the new color, you thread that tail through there and you do the same thing, the same area. Right where the two colors meet, you take your yarn in and you just weave it through the working yarn. This is the side that's attached to your ball. This is your tail. You're weaving it through. Capturing those strands. And you want to do it for, for a little over an inch or so. Okay, pull that through there. So now you can see I have the yarn that's attached to my project, the yarn that's attached to the new ball, and then I have this kind of mess right here. To sort this out, you just take your finger and your fingernail and you push it down. And that makes this, look at that join. I'm pulling on both sides. It is not coming out. And I have a distinct line where these two colors change right there. Now I do have a little bit of tail here and a little bit of tail here, perfectly fine. Once we've knit with this, when that tail is sticking out, we can trim it up super close and it, you won't have to worry about it unraveling because it is woven into the main yarn of it, of the other side of its, um, of the other side of the bend right there. Okay, so now what we do is we go ahead and go back in and knit those last five stitches. I'm on the wrong side of the work. So this is a purl and a purl. Don't worry about that tail. We'll snip that off when we're done. And then these last three stitches are knitting. One, two, three. Look where we ended, right where we wanted that new color to start is where we, where we ended right there. It's like magic. Now we're ready to start the next repeat with our new color. This bulkiness, because the fibers are woven into each other, it is not very much, it, you can't see it after you've knit with it. After you've knitted in where it goes, you don't see the thickness, it goes away. Look at that, it's beautiful. The biggest thing about the Russian join that caught my attention was that your first color that you're using stops at one specific point and your new color starts at that same specific point. Point. Because you back up those stitches, you mark that spot where you want the color to change, it is exact every time. And that's why I really, really like this joint. Plus, you don't have to weave in any ends when you're done. Now you know how to work all the rows in this pattern, including the eyelet ridge section. You also know how to join a new color using the Russian join. Meet me next time and we'll finish up this shawl with binding off and blocking. Remember, you can get a kit with the yarn and printed pattern at OneBigHappy.com. Happy knitting!